Welcome back to Chemistry Made Easy with Brad Eddy. In today's video lesson, I'll be teaching on how to name ionic compounds. Now, what is a compound? A compound is a substance that is made up of two elements. Let's take an example using NaCl. You can see that this is a compound. Why? Because it comprises of two elements. Now, this is the first element and it is called sodium. This is another element and it is called chlorine. First thing first, we are naming ionic compound. And how do you know a compound is ionic? A compound is ionic because it has two different charges or ions. Now, this is what I mean. This is the first sodium ion and sodium ion is positively charged and the other is chlorine, chlorine. And this is also negatively charged. Now, sodium that is positively charged is simply called a cation, whereby chlorine that is negatively charged is called an anion. Now, it should be noted that in naming ionic compounds, basically, the anion, which is the negatively charged atom, name we hand with IDE. And what is the anion here? The chlorine here is the anion. So basically, the name of this compound will end with IDE. So we have So we simply have chloride for chlorine because this chlorine is negatively charged, so it is an anion. So the name of this compound now is called sodium chloride. Sodium chloride because the anion, the name will be changed from um, the normal name to IDE. IDE will be added to the name of the anion. Now let's take another example understand this concept better. Now, using MgBr, you can see this is a compound while it comprises of just two elements. So let's see. This element here now is called magnesium, whereby this is bromine. Now, which of them is positively charged? Magnesium is a metal and it is positively charged. And bromine is an halogen and also a non-metal and it is negatively charged. Remember, in naming ionic compounds, the anion, the name, should be changed from the rest. The normal name to the end of the name basically will be changed or will be replaced by IDE. Now, for bromine, which is, for bromine, which is BR, it will be changed to bromide. So we have BRO. B R O M I D E. So basically, this name will be changed from bromine to bromide. So the name of this compound becomes magnesium bromide. Now let's take another example, example to understand this concept better. Now using the likes of uh, CUS, what is the name of this compound? Now this compound. You can see it comprises of just two elements, and this is copper, and this is sulfur. And copper is positively charged, sulfur is negatively charged. Remember, the positively charged atom is called the cation, the negatively charged atom is called the anion. And remember, for the anion, the name should be changed from the normal name and ends with ID. So what will be the anion? Sulfur again. So sulfur changes to sulfide. And the name of this compound now becomes copper sulfide. Now let's take another example. Using uh, ALP. 
P. What is the name of this compound? Now, this compound is made up of just two elements, an aluminum and phosphorus. Aluminum is a metal and it is positively charged. So basically, it is the cation and phosphorus is a non-metal and it is negatively charged, basically the anion. Remember, I said for the anion, the name should be changed or replaced with ID. So phosphorus changes to phosphide. So this changes to phosphide, whereby the name of this compound becomes aluminum phosphide. Now, let's quickly move over to polyionic compounds. Or polyionic atoms. Now let's quickly move to that now. Polyionic atoms. Basically, this is regarded to be called a radical because radicals are a group of atoms which behave as a single charge unit. So we have this NO3 minus. This radical, it is called the nitrate radical. NO2 minus, this is called the nitrite radical. SO4 minus, this is called the sulfate radical. SO3 minus, this is called the sulfite radical. CRO42 minus, this is called the chromate radical. You have to memorize this. CRO207 minus, this is called dichromate radical. Now, let's quickly talk about others before we start naming ionic compounds. The CN group, which is called the cyanide, the cyanide radical. Now, let's quickly take an example using KNO3. What is the name of this compound? Remember, I say, Potassium here, which is an element, okay, potassium is positively charged. Potassium is positively charged, K+. Plus. And this is the polyionic atom, which I call the nitrate radical. So this compound will be called potassium nitrate. Now let's quickly take another example using CuSO4. Remember this compound, or sorry, this element is called copper, and this is a polyionic atom, which I call the sulfate radical. So what is the name of this compound? It's called copper sulfate. Now we have various names of compounds or ionic compounds. Remember for a compound to be ionic, it must have charge, the cations and the anions. Now, basically, this is how to name ionic compounds. Thanks for watching.